<laughs> Our legal we were interview. just chatting while y'all got yourselves together. That's yeah. like, is, yeah. is Robin back? I'm here now. Oh, you are. All right. Okay. I'm going to share my, um, gosh, where my, um, oh, yeah. So I need to do a, do I still need to do the preamble? I think we should. I was actually going to, um, I like that you do it, Jane. I know it's really redundant for everyone who's been listening, but, okay. um, oops, not that I want to share. That's okay. You can, you can speed read it. Music. I'm just I'm just not a fast talker. You've probably noticed by now. <laughs> Maybe you could sing it. Make it more interesting for us. Yeah, to the tune of the Yellow Rose of Texas, just like <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh so welcome to the Amherst Historical Commission public hearing and uh I'm sorry, public meeting on Wednesday, September sixteenth, twenty twenty based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020. This meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. My name is Jane Wald and as, as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as normal. We'll take a roll call of commissioners in attendance. So as you hear your name called, uh, answer affirmatively. Uh, and uh, you can unmute if you're muted and then um, put yourselves back on mute or just keep on going. So, Jane, quickly, I just want to inter interrupt, sorry. Um, Jane Scheffler is not attending tonight. And so I don't know if someone else would volunteer to take minutes. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> I'll take a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was a tie. Was it a tie? <laughs> yeah, I, I offered Ben. I didn't offer to do it. <laughs> we offered Ben. I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Robin's taking minutes. Um, Thank you, Robin. Robin, are you here? I am here. <laughs> Pat Auth, are you here? Present. Janet Marquart? Yep. Hetty Startup? Yes. Jane Wald, I'm here too. Jane Scheffler is not here. Okay, so we do have a quorum. Um, so I'll include this, this bit just for what it's worth. Please use the raised hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I'll see your, hand, your raised hand and call upon you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. Opportunity for public comment will be provided during the general public comment period. Please be aware commissioners need not respond to comments during the general public comment period. If guests wish to make a comment during that time, when called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So with that, we can begin with announcements if there are any. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have any. Hearing, hearing none, okay. Uh, then a review of the minutes. I'm not sure they were complete. I think Jane, we're not. I don't think Jane completed them. She had a few questions. I never got back to oh, her. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I think that's the same with the previous month's minutes also. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I had a note. Okay. Yeah. The previous month's minutes, she hadn't note, she did send us a draft, but she hadn't noted that I sent her some changes and so mm -hmm. she was gonna go back into them. And then this month we weren't sure, she didn't have a lot of the things that we talked about. So I put them in and then I said, maybe for the bylaws. And then I said, maybe we don't need to write everything down because Ben was going to send us an updated copy. Maybe we could just say we worked on him. So that's what she asked Nate. And so both of those sets of minutes are waiting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think for the bylaw, maybe I'll just add a, like a little bit of a summary, but yeah, I think it's just the document itself becomes um, mm -hmm. part of the, the record and, so is it okay to summarize when we go to the uh, bylaw, um, you know, discussion and edits to bylaw as far as the minutes are concerned? I'm used to doing them as being pretty um, summarizing and not so specific, mm -hmm. but 
Right. I mean, I think, you know, for like last meeting, you know, it could have been, you know, discuss the process of receiving or, you know, the timeline for review and definitions or something. Not, it doesn't have to then okay. go into yeah, or the Or okay. the number of the section so that if we ever want to go back and figure out which meeting we talked about the section, you know, we could find okay. something. That would be nice. Yeah. All right, then. So we'll move to discussion of CPA proposals. Okay. The, um, I was just going to share the um, CPA proposal form. It's similar to last year. I guess what what's different uh, this year is that they're due in mid-October as opposed to mid-December. Uh, they're due October 12th. And the, um, so, you know, the commission uh, could submit a proposal. You know, we already have one historic preservation proposal um, submitted by the Jones Library. I know there's some interest in submitting one for the North Amherst Library. Uh, ben and I talked to um, Salem Place. You know, they uh, have the Marconkey House and, you know, the fence was removed. And then the, the building, actually, gosh, I went by there the other day just to look and I, the building is, could use some work. Um, and I know the Historical Society. So there's probably a lot of outside, a few outside organizations that'll submit proposals. We could review at a previous or at a, um, at an upcoming meeting. Um, and then you know, there's some discussion about whether or not the commission would want to submit a, a proposal. And, you know, what we need to do is just have an overview, a description of funding, perhaps a budget, a timeline, the typical questions, the urgency, what's the resource that's being threatened and why do we need CPA investment? Um, So staff had thought that West Cemetery, you know, or the town cemeteries in general, headstone restoration, you know, there's the fence at West Cemetery. We, um, staff had done an estimate last year about, uh, you know, finalizing the, the faux wrought iron fence. There's a few sections that are still chain link fence, uh, maybe doing a few, a few other things in West Cemetery. And so on the agenda, we had, um, I think we just had, we had West Cemetery as a possible idea Oh, and then town buildings. And so, yeah, yeah I have, I have the uh, list from Jeremiah that he, he emailed me some okay. town building projects. So I think it's just really kind of up to the commission of what we think, um, you know, our projects to put forward. I will say that there is a backlog of historic preservation projects. Most are with outside organizations. So the commission, I think, has the writer's walk. There is now $100,000 for West Cemetery, West Cemetery Headstones and, um, a, and then $25,000 for uh, updating the preservation plan, which I, I guess I didn't realize actually made it through. Um, so I think those are with the commission. And, you know, I, you know do we want to put more money, would we recommend more money to West Cemetery or the cemeteries or, um, you know, for instance, town buildings, I know um, the steps to town hall, the town was thinking about, re you know, re you know the, the big uh, granite steps facing Boatwood Ave, thinking about replacing, or not replacing, but well, actually taking them down and then rebuilding them. So they're, I, yeah, I think that's what it needs to take to get them to be level again and set right. So right now they've kind of heaved and fallen over time. Um, you know, there's projects like that. So I don't. Ben, so could you read the list? Sorry? Could you read us the list of you could share? Yeah, screen. um I could share my screen. I think uh just have to hijack it from me. Um, you can hijack it. Yeah. I don't need to stop share, do I? Okay. Um yeah, so this is Jeremiah LaPlante is the uh, facilities manager for the town. Um and he we I had asked him about um possible projects that could qualify under historic preservation. You know, some of these things are just general maintenance, I would think, but um, you know, the things that stood out to me were the steps for town hall, um, the, the windows on the ground level are deteriorating. Um, Munson Library in South Amherst. Right now it's like a vinyl, part of it's a vinyl sided building, which uh, I think Jeremiah was saying that the building itself is from like the 19, early 1900s and wasn't, you know, the vinyl siding is a new addition. Um, it's le less to maintain, obviously, but it's not the original. Um, 
and then some things at the North Amherst School. What's the North Amherst School? It's the brick building where the Survival Center and Head Start used to be located. So it's, oh. you know, if you're looking at the library, it's on your left. It's Oh, Head Start is still there, isn't it? The brick one? Yeah, it's where Head Start is. For the Survival Center used to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Used to be. I guess Head Start's okay. still there. I thought, I thought yeah, it was it is. Okay. Yeah, I go there with a little kid. Okay. Um, I, many of these things are maintenance. Why has it come under CPAC instead of town budget? Well, the question would be, you know, could these be CPA eligible? And so oh, okay. I, think the, I think the thought would be to have, you know, if it, if it could be both a capital project and CPA, could it be both or, you know, draw from both? I mean, I agree some of these are maintenance. I mean, I will say that the slate roofs are really interesting. I guess I hadn't really noticed that all three of them is like, mm -hmm. would we, could we bundle uh, mm. slate roof work? I mean, I will say, I will say that there's not many um, roofers who are doing that anymore. And is kind of a specialty. Uh, windows can be quite expensive. I think the windows are maintenance. Yeah. I yeah, think the slate, the slate roofs are interesting. I'd like to know if they're, uh, I'm sure for Town Hall that's the original roof and it'd be nice to know if it's the same for Munson and North Amherst School. But that's a historic aspect of the architecture of those buildings. So right, that would fit. I, I yeah. see that as more qualifying than some of the other suggestions. I agree. If if so, town hall slate roof is original. Uh, so yeah, that's preservation. I'd like to know if the Munson Library slate roof was always a slate roof, uh, and whether the North Amher School slate roof was always a slate roof. I think the North Amher School is. Um, we had used block grant money to restore some of the building a number of years ago. And I think it, you know, it's a slate roof and I think it's a multicolored roof with a pattern. Mm. And so mm -hmm. I, I, if it's not original, it's, it's, it's quite old, uh, the roof there. Is uh, Jeremiah thinking on the Munson siding to replace the vinyl siding with wood or just replace it with vinyl? Because if we're going back to closer to the original, that could qualify. Yes, yeah, he was more. thinking of going back to the original. That would be nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the vinyl yeah. siding, I mean, it's also on the back of the building. It's not as... No, it's, it's, uh, it, I think it is front facing. Front too, but I think it's... Uh, okay. Like, gotcha. Um, that building yeah, does need a lot of work. Um, yeah. I mean, I know the HVAC system probably isn't included, but between that and the attic insulation, the people who work in there just suffer in the summer. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. so is the question about this sort of what we've already got on the docket for now, like the headstones and the writer's walk and, you know, existing stuff that's in the works. And are we trying to get that completed before we take on anything else? Is, I'm just trying to get a feel of what the, what we're being asked to do here. You know, I think that's a really good question, Hetty. So that's one that the CPA committee is going to ask. So one, you know, do we have enough on the plate already? And are we, you know, can we justifiably ask for more? And if we do think we can, what are the projects we would ask for? So, um, you know, what's the reason the headstones aren't haven't been done for two years again? What was that? I think they it was just the first year, right? right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was just um, you know due to staffing issues and uh, you know staff was we were short staff for a bit. Um, so I think the commission's actually returned some money in the last few years. And I don't, I think the commission's in a pretty good position. If we wanted to request more CPA funds, I do think there's going to be some, um, we're gonna have to explain some of the outstanding balances. Uh, and I was going to say the CPA committee really now is trying to have projects that can move forward uh, within a year and be completed within three. So, you know, we, the commission used to, I mean, I think a lot of people did, but, um, the commission was really good at bankrolling CPA money for projects that didn't get done, unfortunately. But, you know, um, so I think, Katie, your, your, your point's a really good one. Um, you know, and so between the buildings, the cemeteries, other projects at West Cemetery, you know, I think staff had thought about headstones, uh, landscape treatment, and fencing. Uh, I thought there was one other, maybe signs, if we needed money for signs. Um, so, you know, do we, 
do we bundle West Cemetery or cemeteries together, for instance? Would we bundle buildings, slate roofs on town buildings together? Um, you know, I think there's, uh, you know, those are good questions. I will say that, um, just I'll mention it, it's not, I don't think it's ready, but you know, there's discussion about what's happening with the North Common because CPA put in um, quite a bit of money to the North Common project. And so if the CPA committee asking what's happening with old projects, there's, uh, gosh, probably um, half a million or more of CPA money that's been put to the North Common. And so staff recently has been discussing that, you know, would that come back to CPA? Um, okay. you know, we do we hard you know, on that plan? I know. And so the plan uh, was previewed uh, just preliminarily by the council and it hasn't really gone back to them, the town council for a full review. And I think that's going to happen soon. So, um, but you know, that's announced, that's a big project that right. A lot of work went into, and then it was quite expensive. And with the change in government, it just, it kind of lost momentum. Uh, I think for the historical commission projects. Um, so we've got at least three different projects right now. And, uh, you know, I, we could get ourselves back into the same situation where we have too many projects to be able to execute. So I would, I, I would be more in favor of making progress on what we've got. We could expand something with a like project that uses same contractors. In other words, I mean, for example, you know, expand our cemetery work, but you know, if I'm concerned that if we take on too many projects, we'd just be back where we started and have to turn money back. Except that some of these we wouldn't have anything to do with because we'd be handing the money over to the town to I'm talking about no, I'm just really talking about historical commission projects, not not town buildings. Oh, so if the town buildings were the proposed, it wouldn't be the commission proposing, it'd be the town. Right. And we'd just be seeing those come through. Right. Okay, I thought, that's why I didn't understand. I thought it was maintenance, a lot of this. I kept thinking, why are we doing this instead of the town? Okay. Well, it's interesting, yeah. I mean, I guess we hadn't thought about who would be the proposing entity. You know, would, it, would the commission want to say, okay, we're the ones making the proposal, say, for the slate roofs, or would you want the town to do that? as its own, you know, as its own uh, proposal. And then the commission would support it. Yeah, or review it with all the other ones. Like is. I said, you know, the library, there'll be, you know, there could be a half a dozen CPA proposals um, for the commission to review in two months and make recommendations to the CPA committee. So maybe the discussion tonight then is if we think the commission, you know, wants the town to apply for slate roofs and the, you know, maybe the, I would recommend a vote by the commission saying, well, either we'd want the commission to want to take the lead on it, or it's something they'd recommend that the facilities manager would take the lead on it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stop my share, but I'll, uh, I can check in with Jeremiah about the slate roofs for uh, Munson and North Amherst and just get a sense of. It'd, it'd be age. interesting to know whether they're original or how old they are, but as I look on this list, that's the one thing in each area that seems to be something we should support, if not request. Yeah. Because that's, that's the historic nature of the construction mm -hmm. of those buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, to yeah, replace I, them with asbestos or, or some other solution in the future would destroy the original look. I also think that it is better for some other department of the town to, to be the applicant and ask for our support. Because if we became the applicant, then different areas of the town may just begin to see the historical commission and the, uh, the preservation portion of CPAC money as being a pass through. And mm -hmm. that would be. Yeah, I mean, it would seem like the proposals that come from the Historical Commission should be more directly related to our work. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want to spread the sense of historical ownership as wide as possible. We don't Absolutely. just want to hold that moniker, um, I think. And, the, you know, slate roofs are pretty dear to my heart. So I love Nate's idea of bundling the slate roofs on the library and the town hall. Um, 
I, but I agree with Jane that perhaps the town should apply for it. Yeah. And we should support it. Yeah. So of this whole list, slate roofs are dear to my heart. I've had houses with slate roofs, yeah. and they're hard to maintain, and they're hard to repair. And but expensive. Once, and expensive, expensive. But once they're gone, the they're history gone. of that of that is gone. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, however we have to do the slate roofs on all three facilities, I think, you know, you know, Nate and Ben can figure it out how to how to put that forward. And and Ben, if you can find out the age of those slate roofs, whether they're original, whether they have have were original and been repaired and maintained over time, that's mm -hmm. part of the the argument for this the CPA funds. Right. I think you know CPA doesn't fund repair. So right. we'd have to change that to, you know, restore or preserve. And so I agree if it is, sure. right. if they are original roofs and we are, you know, maintaining them, then that's, you know, I said maintaining, but, you know, it really is a preservation uh, activity, not a repair. Is there time in one month to find a, a slate roofer, get a estimate on all three buildings, put it together with a proposal and get it in? Or are we talking something too big for this short year. That would be up to, I think that would be up to Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can run that His by job. him. Yeah, yep. there, there are the occasion to get a, an estimate for repair of a slate roof about two years ago. And the estimate was $60,000 uh, for wow. a, just an ordinary sized house. Wow. So it's going to going to be it'll probably be expensive it, it will be expensive but i i know there was a house a private house on shea street that that um recently had a slate roof restored so there there are people out there doing it yeah. it's just mm -hmm. a question of knowing who they are and whether they'd be responsive in this time frame right yeah, I think New England's, yeah, New England Slate Company or Roof Company, they did, they worked on the first congregational church. I think it was New England Slate, but um, yeah, no, I, it's a good question. I mean, maybe if we uh, get this to Jeremiah uh, this week, he can, he can, um, he can get on it. And I guess the question would be then, you know, what, how does the commission feel about, you know, West Cemetery? Would we want to put forward a, um, I can, get back to a share, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, if there are any other projects for West Cemetery, whether it be, what am I sharing? What are people looking at? I guess like my screen is yeah, looking at the agenda. agenda. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. There we are. It didn't indicate that to me. Um, sorry. You know, would we want to put forward any other um, projects in West Cemetery, you know, try to bundle fixing the fence or anything else? Um, I would suggest we really get on the case of getting the last two allocations for the tombstones done this year. That's the third, second and third year. So that's the end of right. Right. the, the st headstones there. And then maybe once that's done, we'd have more ground to stand on. Mm -hmm. That wasn't meant to be a pun. Um, <laughs> to, to request continued repairs of that cemetery and to go to some of the others and do the headstones like in the yeah. south cemetery thing but if we don't if we have money outstanding right now for headstone repair and we start asking for more i think it's going to weaken our case yeah. i i, they, I they, agree with you Dan. concerned weren't you concerned that 100 or whatever we have allotted now wasn't enough to do what we wanted to do i think a hundred thousand can do a, um can do quite a bit i think what we were the question was um no, just, you know, we, we, the idea for the 100,000 that the commission knows we were going to get, a, you know, a, a bid out this fall to have work start. I mean, it's, we almost can't. I thought this year. was a continuation of the bid we had for three years at 50,000 a year. Yeah, but we can't, we can't, I think uh, Brandon or, or someone, I think it was Brandon was under the assumption that we could just keep rolling a contract over to the same contractor and we can't do that. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's like every time we get a, a um, CPA fund, we actually have to re- to rebid it or you know procure it so we couldn't just so i think brandon actually thought with the second 50 he he had um you know the conservators he thought they he had i think he was originally having them to start it and then uh you know 
uh, by the time that summer came around, we said actually then there, then it, you know, was, you know, we had to tell them no, because we can't just change order that every year. So and now we're dependent on Anthony's schedule to get a bid. So it's going to be a while. But mm -hmm. I, th I still think it can be ready for next spring. So, I mean, I, again, I mean, to your point, I think it is, we have some products out there. How do you set it? So are we ready to ask for more? You know, do we, do we have, you know, you know, uh, for instance, DPW was interested in completing or managing the fence project at West Cemetery. So would, you know, like the slate roof, would we ask or recommend that, you know, public works then apply for West Cemetery for the fence or do we just wait? Do we just wait on that because. Is the fence a preservation project? It is. So, you know, um, the original, you know, with according to the West Cemetery preservation plan, there had been, I don't know if there had been, but you know, we had there, um, I don't know, it's like eighty percent of the fence was, you know, was was um, funded with CPA funds five, seven years ago, and we just know there there wasn't enough funding to finish it. So what's left on the east and south um, sides are, you know, chain link fence. Okay. Well, that if if DPW is going to do the work, then. That would be okay. I wouldn't want to go beyond that, though. I mean, uh, it would do the work. I think they they had contacted a few um, fence contractors last fall to get quotes, so oh, they, would, okay. they would you know they would probably manage it. Well, again, if they propose it, we could support it, and that'd be great, mm -hmm. right? So, in terms of process of what we're doing here, is that we're sort of getting a list from the town of things that might have historic preservation. Um, allowability and then suggesting to them that yes this would be allowable and it would be good to submit a proposal right and then I mean we would make a recommendation for the specific proposal after we reviewed it right so I think you know so at some point sometimes the commission may take it on themselves and say well, we'll we you know the commission would be the sponsor of this proposal and work okay. on it but it sounds like that's not you know that's not being recommended this year so okay You know, Can we strongly recommend to the town and DPW to follow up with the slate roof and the plate roofs and the fence? That, yeah, that could. That, that could in the minutes or something. Right. So we were going to uh, take a vote on what our recommendations were. Right. And then before I forget, I just wanted to say that um, you know, the commission um the vote to uh for robin to stay or remain or be the cpa representative so it's something we should do at this meeting as well just um you know, I know everyone supports her in that role but we do have to have a vote and thank you robin for volunteering oh no problem so do to move why don't we do that nominated? first let's yeah let's do the vote for robin first okay and i nominate robin to be our cpa or cpac rep and I second. Okay. So because we're all, we're, I can't see hands on the screen right now. So I'll just go down the roll call. Uh, Pat off. Yes. Uh, let's see. Jan Marquardt. Yes. Hetty Startup. Yes. Robin Fordham. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Wall. That's supposed yes. to vote. Is she, <laughs> she can she vote. voting? I can vote. Good. Yeah, you can vote. You can vote yeah. no. I'm voting yes. <laughs> if you weren't yeah. voting yes, I'd say you couldn't vote. Okay. <laughs> well, we have a unanimous vote of the. Awesome. If, wait, if I missed anyone? Okay. No. Uh, we have a unanimous vote of our esteemed. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I shall serve with honor. <laughs> all right. Um, do you all feel that we've discussed the CPA proposal sufficiently, or is there? Would you like to continue that discussion? I'm, I just wanted to follow up with Nate about the uh, what about like the issues with the landscape in West Cemetery in terms of the woody vegetation and kind of overgrown areas. What I remember we were talking about that. 
Yeah, I mean, there's been some, you know, staff, you know, this summer there was a number of um, complaints about the condition of West Cemetery. The meadow didn't, hasn't, didn't quite um, meadowfy and <laughs> the maintenance over time has, you know, allowed woody shrubs to grow up. So, you know, I think for a while actually the meadow was looking pretty good, but because of the way the maintenance of it, you know, especially near headstones, um, you know, with, you know, with the minimal mowing, trees and shrubs started growing. And so it's to a point now where those things actually have to be probably, you know, hand remo removed by hand and cut by hand, uh, just so stones won't be damaged. And Is that the area we were going to bring the sheep? It was, yeah. or is. So okay. they, we still have to cut down the woody stuff before we can bring sheep. And my sheep person I haven't spoken to in a while because we weren't all getting together in person, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but he wanted to take a look at it to see if whatever was growing there was compatible with sheep. So I think, yeah, so I think if it's not a CPA proposal, I thought at least maybe for a future agenda item would be discussing how to address that area of West Cemetery. You know, is it a recommendation? Is it, I don't know, a volunteer day? Is it some way to try to get, you know, clean up that, that, that older section because it is becoming overgrown. I think the, the meadow and the plants, that's easily mowed and rectified. I think, you know, there was never interpretive signs put up describing why that process was started and has been ongoing. So there had been actually a number of years ago, I would put up signs and then people would take them down like every two weeks. They, they were temporary. I mean, they were nice. They were laminated. They were on a, on a post, but I will say that, um, they would be taken all the time. And so my thought is, unless it's a permanent sign, I mean, you know, these things were, you know, mounted on a wood base and staked in the ground and they would just be totally removed. And so it was really difficult to keep going back there and putting up si temporary signs. Um, but could we say to CPA rather than saying, I mean, to DPW, rather than saying DPW put together, we support that you put together a proposal for a fence. What if we were to say DPW put together a proposal for whatever you think you can accomplish that's most needed right now in West Cemetery? And if they want to propose some money to do the landscaping or the fence or signs or whatever, it can come out of DPW and we'll support it. And then each year we can do more. Or they can do more and we'll support more. Would that work? They might not. They might not propose something that is really kind of preservation mm. oriented it might just be kind of scout the place uh, yeah. that's an exaggeration but um i see your point yeah i mean an alternative could be that you know that we take back the fence and we propose the package or yeah i mean maybe what i mean the commission could Say, you know, we could call Taylor Davis or a landscape company and just, you know, ask them for an estimate on what it would take to remove the woody shrubs. Yeah. And if it's 7,000 or 25,000, you know, that becomes a proposal this year. And it's just something that I think, you know, should be done. When we had, um, we had uh, and the conservators come out a few years ago and they, they really thought, you know, at some point, they thought that a lot of the woody shrubs near the headstones really need to be done by hand and hand tools, you know, so it can't be going in there with machinery. It really has to be, you know, a kind of a labor intensive process. Not that it's a difficult process, it just. Well, and it's of the essence because we can't start the sheep process until that's done. Right. It's just kind of stacked up and we don't, these things only grow worse. And it could also aid in the restoration of headstones. I mean, maybe this, sure. maybe, the landscape component is something the historical commission would propose this year. It might not be a big ask, and it'd be something uh, that. I think it would be great. It's to necessary that. to to yeah. preserve the headstones, and necessary if we're going to try to get back to naturally taking care of that meadow. Yeah. Yeah, and if we emphasize the headstones, maybe they'll see that this kind of goes along with getting the the other two items that were already allocated finished. Right. Right. It sort of all goes together, doesn't it, really? And I think the idea of working to get the chain link fence removed and the meadow trimmed and the woody shrubs removed, it, it's all of one piece, really, in terms of how we think about that space. Mm 
in terms of the asset for the town. Jane, I'm curious, is, is um, Emily's grave and the Dickinson plot something that you all have responsibility for? Um, no, but no, I, remember, no, no. I remember when I was first in Amherst going on my Emily Dickinson tour and they said at the end, you know, you should go visit her grave. And I had no idea how close it was because I'd never been to Amherst before and I didn't have a phone with a map app on it. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things that's so cool that it's just so connected and so close. And, you know, um, I, I, would I would love us to, to repackage essentially the West Cemetery as a, as a sort of holistic preservation package, you know, whether it's fencing or removal of woody shrubs or introducing sheep. I mean, these are all things that we've been talking about for quite some time um, and seeing a lot of things resolved, but other things are sort of still in play. Um, it would be great to, to see things sort of <laughs> tidied for want of a better word. Well, the, the Emily without Dickinson, treading on anybody's toes. I, I no, but the Emily Dixon grave is is certainly a destination for people. And yes, it is. I'm I'm moved when I've been there to see it that people leave things mm -hmm. on the grave, yeah. and so that's an indication that it is a destination. Yeah, and I agree with you, Hetty. You know, to make the cemetery more um, accessible and more inviting is part of the preservation of the history of Amherst with those graves there and many other. I mean, there, there are historic graves there, not just the Dickinson family. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's a highlight of uh, Amherst. So I think I'm hearing that there's some uh, interest in creating this package that could take care of several sort of <coughs> isolated pieces of what needs to be done in West Cemetery, and we could propose that as a package. Fence, woody shrubs, and was there a third thing? Someone mentioned, we mentioned talk about signs, but I'm not sure Fine. if we're ready for that. Mm, we're probably maybe, not. Um, maybe we could write a proposal for the woody shrubs, which has a little preamble that says, you know, as part of a um, multi-part preservation package for the cemetery. We, we'd like to ask for a number of things. We'll start this year with the woody shrubs and we'll come back next year for the fence and sort of like we did with the three-year headstones. Um, and maybe we, we might even come back to them for sheep money. I mean, who knows, you know? Right, but if we, if we could lay out the progression yeah, and let them know asking the for money for this year. Would the fence be too much to ask for together with the re removal of the woody shrubs, do you think? I think the I fence think would, it would be, strengthen our, I think it would yeah. be strength. Yeah, okay. I think the fence is, you know, the estimate last year, um, I think it was between 20 and 30,000. So that was done last fall. So I mean, I'm, I'm not sure prices have gone up too much, but at most would be 30,000, I'd say. So the woody, the woody shrubs and to completely enclose the cemetery, to seem like, a, to enhance it and enclose it, mm -hmm. you know, would seem like a package to me. Mm -hmm. And then to talk about um, the, uh, the, what's already on board of, of the uh, restoration of the headstones, it's, it's, it's all connected. And then maintaining the meadow in the future, mm -hmm. perhaps with sheep. Yeah. But, but, but the woody, woody things, and, and they, you know, they're gonna need to be removed by the roots, not, not just cut down. Well, because, you can paint that stuff on them that kills the root. Well, what, what, destroy them one yeah. way or the other, because otherwise it's gonna be an ever-present problem. Right, no, yeah, I, I try to be clear with, uh, you know, with a contractor that it's not just cutting, it's removal, whether it's right by herbicide or by physical removal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, that, I think, and you know, the commission could put this forward and, you know, Public Works would help manage the fence piece. I mean, they're, I think they were interested in that. So whether or not it's the commission's proposal, I think, you know, some of it would also then be managed by staff from Public Works. 
And who so, does landscaping type stuff? That's not DPW? They do. It'd be, it'd be oh, okay. probably the same division of public works, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure that we, if they have the time or, you know, if they, if they, you know, they, maybe if they had the direction, they would do that. But I think at this point, it's a pretty. No, I mean, to oversee it if we get somebody else to do it. Oh, right. No, I think, right. I think it would probably be um, the division of trees and grounds headed by Alan Snow. So okay. Would, I was thinking Snow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, should we, are we ready to come to a, like a vote on this to, to have a, to have a motion? about where we've ended up. Where do we, what, like, where do, where do we summarize I, I, which projects we have on board? We're talking about the West Cemetery and, and the phase that we would request would be the finishing the fence and removing the woody growth in, in the meadow area. Yeah. Completely getting rid of it with the idea of how we could maintain it in the future. And, but part of that whole first part is to preserve the headstones that are there mm -hmm. and, and, and make the, the uh, cemetery more inviting. Yeah, we could say that the pur purpose of this proposal is to facilitate the ongoing headstone restoration. Right. And to upgrade the fence and um, remove the woody growth in the meadow in order to um, preserve the headstones. Yeah, and, well, and the meadow. So that, yeah, and to so, prepare for further maintenance in the years to come. So, can I ask the question? Is the meadow itself the preservation aspect? Yeah. Well, it seems to be because it was deeded that way. Is is that right? Like, I'm just asking from like a, yeah. from a, 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 Jane from a historic preservation perspective, removing the trees is an attempt to preserve the meadow, not the headstones, right? Well, they're yeah. encroaching on the headstones. It's both. It's I think both. it's both. Yeah, I would right. say both. Yeah, some of the some of the trees are growing up right along the headstones. So I mean, they're going to eventually topple them. Okay. Or damage. Okay. So the okay. Thank you for the summary. That's that's really helpful. And I think the context of the motion is what the historical commission wishes to propose for CPA funding in this round. Correct. Okay. Second. Are we abandoning the plate roof thing? No, no, we no, don't no, no, no. This is one, this is just one. One bit. Taking them one at a time, Hetty. Okay, sorry. No, we decided that the site roof should come from the town. This will come from us. Mm -hmm. Correct. Well, this is right. it. This is the only thing we really want right. to propose. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Oh, we don't want to propose? Anything around that we don't or do we want to recommend? Um, all right, we'll talk about slate roofs in a second. Let's just keep going on the West Cemetery. So right. we need we need a, a wording for this proposal. I think I have the general sense of it. I think you know it would be uh, staff Ben and I would reach out to DPW and we would work on a proposal right. uh, that um, you know could be you know, submitted or reviewed by the commission again before, if we try to meet before the 12th. So it's, you know, I, I feel like I have, um, you know, the two elements we'd be working on as part of the proposal. Yeah, I think the motion can be pretty simple uh, that something like the historical commission um, authorizes uh, staff liaisons to work, uh, to, to develop a proposal to preserve uh, the, to take to develop a proposal uh, to preserve the meadow and the headstones. I mean, I I guess what I mean is I don't think we have to spell out every step. I think no, can, because you know. by removing the woody thing is preserving the meadow. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I so move what Jane said. Right, <laughs> but we need to get the fence in there. Yeah, we need. Right, to can I go for my notes here? How about the historical? <laughs> Commission moves to authorize staff liaisons to develop a proposal for the preservation of the West Cemetery fence and removal of woody growth in the meadow. To preserve, in effort to preserve the existing headstones. Hold on. 
That sounds like Robin has made a motion. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just going to say the yeah, same thing. Uh, um, okay, hold on a second. this. Uh, so I move that the Historical Commission authorize staff liaisons to develop a proposal to prefer, pre preserve the West Cemetery fence and headstones through the removal of woody growth in the meadow. And, and re sorry, <laughs> I think we have to get re replacement of the of the chain link fence in there somewhere. Okay, all right. So we're not preserving the fence. We're replacing we're the link fence. Okay. To restore, well, to restore oh, the, the yeah. fence. Right. Um, to, uh, by by removing the chain link fence to restoration of the continuation oh. of the historic fence. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I mean, it was fine. I I had, we under. I mean, I think it was just. It doesn't have to be perfect because Nate knows what we're talking about. Right, I know. That's what I was trying to get. This uh, authorized staff is to develop a proposal, a proposal for preservation of the fence and meadow and headstones in West Cemetery. I mean, yeah, that's meadow maintenance and meadow maintenance yep. period, and and he'll right. he'll work it out from there. Sure. Uh, that sounds good, Robin. You cap. I, th I think you captured it, and I would second that. I'd razzle and dazzle you. I might throw something in there. Maybe like, um, you know. Where is where is Elmo? Where's Emily in West Cemetery? <laughs> that could be the title of the proposal. So I, I'm going to I'm sorry to do this, but I'm gonna bring up a a very small point that it could be possible that CPA committee members would notice. And that is if we use the word maintenance, then we're talking about maintenance and not yep. restoration. Right. Right. So so it's restoration of the meadow. No, uh, it's not restoration. I'm. Just, I, this is just for. I mean, how how the proposal, what the language of the pro proposal uses, is one thing. But we're just asking Nate to develop the proposal. So so far, I've got the authorized staff liaison to develop proposal for the preservation of headstones, fence, and meadow of West Cemetery. I think that's okay. As right. simple as you can get it. Right. Okay. I hereby move. Is there a second? Second. Who was that? Pat. Well, Pat. Yeah. Pat. Okay. Okay. And if uh, I, I'm imagining there's no further discussion, but if you wish to discuss further, please let me know. Uh, and now we'll move to a vote. Um, roll call. Think. Sorry. You have to do a roll call again. Yes, I think yeah, I do because yeah. I can't see everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, Robin Fordham? Yes. Jan Marquardt? Yes. Pat Off? Yes. Hetty Startup? Yes. And Jane Wald? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So how will we deal with the slate roofs? Because I, I don't want us to lose that idea. Uh -huh. Um, so is that a, a recommendation to, uh, would the slate roofs be a recommendation to the town to, to submit a proposal as opposed to the Historical Commission submitting? Right, with, with the support of the Historical Commission. Um, so I'm going to ask Nate and Ben, do you think we need a vote on that or is it a recommendation just as a part of our meeting? I'm um, okay with it just being a recommendation as part of the meeting. Yeah, like how does the uh, CPA proposal process work? Like, would would there be a letter? Way, the, way, the way it works is we, you know, let Jeremiah know that the commission recommends, you know, the slate roofs, bundling them, and then he would develop a proposal and submit it. And then, you know, all the historic preservation proposals would then be brought to the commission for their review and recommendations to the CPA committee. So you know, this, the historical commission really, you know, is, would be submitting just the one we discussed for West Cemetery, and it would be the town, you know, maybe the facilities department submitting one for the slate roof. 
you know, just as like the Jones Library submits one for the Jones Library. So, and then they all get reviewed by the commission in uh, November. But does it hold any weight if we do a formal support for that proposal? I think the formal support comes after they put the proposal in. So the proposal will come before us and then we will uh, put our formal recommendation behind it, which I will take to the CPA. Okay, committee. all right. Okay, so I think we have a consensus on that recommendation mm -hmm. going forward. Um, so I believe we can now go to the demolition application for 535 South Pleasant. Sure, and I think, did I, um, I don't know if I let the commission know, but this, the, um, the structure was already taken down. Yeah. Yeah, so the, um, You know, uh, I can just you know go walk through the um, you know the the structure is out back of the house. It's an old you know it is an older structure. It was an older structure, and you know here are the images of it. Um, and so you know I had asked the the owners. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I, I thought they were pretty aware of the need to complete a demolition application, uh, and it may have been that just the I'm not sure maybe the contractor. Maybe they had a timeline and they they didn't deviate from it. I'm not sure what happened, but so you know, from the commission's perspective, <coughs> you know, there could be some corrective action. There could be a letter to the owner, to the building inspector, commissioner. I'm you know, I just I wanted it. You know, the commission, if we want to discuss it at all, to be have it be on the agenda. Seems to me, if we have any teeth, we have to do something for people who do this, or it's just gonna be done all the time. Um, you know, I mean, the easiest thing to do is put in an application and go ahead and do it, and then nothing happens. You get your hand slapped. There should be a fine or something. Is there is there a, a consequence, Nate, to someone doing this? Illegally Le established? There, there is in the bylaw, you know, there's a fine, there's, uh, you know, the ability to fine until it's rebuilt. Uh, to just to issue a fine. So for instance, um, if the commission were to take a, an action tonight uh, and say it was taken down um, three weeks ago, you know, I, I don't know, I'd have to talk to the building commissioner, maybe then that the three, the three weeks is the finable period, right? So there's three weeks where the building commissioner could assess a fine, which is there's a certain amount per day. So, you know, it could be a- It's a hundred per day, isn't it? I, yeah, I forget what the bylaw says. I mean, then it's also for the building commissioner if that if he wants to modify it. But say it is a hundred a day and it's thirty days, then or you know twenty days, and that's you know two thousand dollars. And maybe the building commissioner would say, well, that's maybe I'll, he would issue a fine for half of that as a, a I, you know, I don't know how how that would work out, but it's just something. Um, yeah, it, it you know especially because the applicant or the homeowner had reached out uh, and we had discussed this, and then this happened. You know, I think sometimes homeowners may not even know that they need to submit a demolition application. They might take down a building. This one just seemed strange because they had reached out to the town and then it still came down even though there was discussions about needing to submit an application. I'm wondering if we, I mean, I, I lean toward some kind of fine, uh, but I'm wondering if we should talk about the, its historic significance as we would for any structure before moving to a fine. I, I agree with that, Jane, because I'm not real clear on the age of it or its function historically, its, its style significantly, all of those things that we would look at. Yeah, and but the point here is not whether or not we would have allowed demolition. The point is, is they completely hijacked the process and went ahead. So of course, we spend a half hour of our time deciding whether it was historically significant when it's gone now. I think we should just say it doesn't matter what condition the building was. You skipped our process. Therefore, you have to pay a fine. And it's and that, um, that when PVPC went around and looked at possible out, outbuildings, um, I was trying to find it. They had taken a photograph of this one as one that was visible from the road and you know, they, they identified over 100, like 120, but this was one of the 120 that they thought could be a good example of, 
uh, you know, just a kind of a vernacular outbuilding in Amherst. And I was, they didn't do much more than that. I thought at one point they had sent a um, spreadsheet with possible dates, but I don't, I don't think they did. Okay. But the well, fact that they identified it. They identified it, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that matters that they identified it. Yeah, and we can use that when we tell the building commissioner these people should be fined. Mm -hmm. Is that enough, Nate? Yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, I agree. At this point, you know, uh, it didn't seem like the owners did much research at all to try to figure out the age of the structure. They said, oh, it's 49 or 50 years old. And I said, well, it looks a lot older. You know, is it? <coughs> I, yeah, I mean, I think I, it's something that staff would have to talk to the building commissioner with in terms of how the enforcement steps. So okay. is it left to us to, to um, propose that there be an enforcement response to this? What do we, what do, we need to, to do? Um, because I agree it, it, with Jan. If, if people feel there's no consequence, they're just going to start knocking things down without it going to review. Yeah, I mean, maybe just the, co the commission, um, right, uh, I think, Pat, you said it, you know, would uh, recommend enforcement action and then that's something staff would, would look into with the, with the building commissioner. And maybe once we have the new bylaws passed and everything, we should do a newspaper article saying, here's our new bylaws. And by the way, we do <laughs> impose a fine if you don't do this, just so that it's publicly announced in the paper and everybody is forewarned, you know? Yeah, that's a good idea. But yeah, I, you know, I, I don't remember a case of a fine being imposed so if this is i mean i'd like to hear from robin and hetty uh their opinions also and then i'd be ready to go right ahead <laughs> not, uh, not to offer an opinion but <laughs> uh i think a fine seems appropriate i'm not quite sure the the what the Process. I mean, it would be this would be a good experience to kind of see what the process is for actually imposing one. Like, how do you decide, um, you know, what is significant enough to send the message? I mean, and and then the question. It's a good question that Jan points out is how does finding this particular property let other people know that they'll get fined too? I mean, there's, there, you've got both aspects to it, right? So we'll got, get around, I'm sure, if these people are unhappy. Uh, <laughs> it is Amherst, after all. Yeah. We'll, we'll hear about but, it. Yeah, that, you know, so, so the first part is, is uh, for the actual transgression, and the second part is for the, the effect of deterrence, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it could be that, you know, that it, if the commission recommends it to the building commissioner, then it's, you know, the building commissioner, uh, you know, with discussion, with staff determines the best action. Um, yeah, that would be my preference. Yeah, and then maybe instructs the clerks at the front desk when they hand these things out to say, you know, just last week somebody didn't <laughs> didn't wait and they were fined. We could have a little picture of uh, the building and a, and and the story bullet right at the window. <laughs> of course, nobody goes to windows anymore. Never mind. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe on the applications there needs to be a statement to the effect that demolition before approval by the historic uh -huh. commission is subject to a fine. That's true. If, if that isn't clear anywhere, maybe on the demolition application there needs to be just a simple statement like yeah, that. They aren't looking at the bylaws. We'll just put it right on the application. Right. Right. Yeah, it may not be clear on the um, by the application form. Yeah, so I think a simple think statement, that the demolition the prior to approval. I mean, um, you think, you know, people would figure that out. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to invite Hetty to um, it, 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 say anything that she'd like to about I'm, this. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the permit um, and I'm looking at the photographs and I just, I, I do think it's, it, it's sort of like whatever, if we have a, a ruling, we should have everybody follow it, and um, we don't we don't want this kind of thing to set a precedent for further um, bad behaviour, if you like. Um, and I, I'm curious about this building. I mean, now now it's gone, you know. And I'm I'm also a little bit. I see some of these photographs, and I think they've been taken in a way to 
um, you know, justify that there was no contest about whether this building should come down or not because it was in a poor state of repair. Um, I'm looking at those nice hinges, I'm looking at the sort of big house, little house aspect to it a little bit. Um, you know, I just, I just think this was sort of a pity that this happened really, um, especially if it was one of these buildings that was within the, the remit of that survey generally earlier on that I, I wasn't privy to, but I just think um, this is, we don't want this to keep happening. Yeah, so I will, you know, it was interesting the the application described um, the building and then um, based on the photographs there and uh, just the aerial, you know, there's kind of two parts to it. And so I just, I emailed Ben asking him to drive by to verify tomorrow because um, looking through the information, it's still unclear to me. They said at one point they were going to tear down just this little piece right. and maybe leave the bigger piece. And I'm still not clear, but I think, right, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. It looks like they never really wanted to answer the question honestly um and the picture is right where i mean some of the shots are just like it's you know they're not even they're not even in focus right i know yeah. they're not, they're not the whole thing either. Yeah. it looks like they only took the bad parts and the rest of it might have looked re really fine you know right right i mean this picture is just yeah, I, I, no, I think i think this is a little bit you know i'm I'm really stretching it here but i think it's a little bit of a cynical approach to yes it's their property but you know um we can do what we want kind of a thing um i'm looking on street view and when yeah. there's leaves on the trees i can't see it yeah i can yeah. see a little bit underneath one tree but it's very hard to see yeah i yeah, could so much I had I thought I downloaded the images from uh, from Shannon. Let me just um, um, if I can get pull those up. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, I'm searching my computer. I don't know why. So Ben, you're going to do a drive by tomorrow to see if the whole structure was demolished. Yep. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go check it out. Um, <clears throat> it looks like you know. Um, could maybe see it from the street or sidewalk, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Can we see this? Can we, can we see the new yes. PDF here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sorry, just, sorry, I'm gonna zoom down. It's in alphabetical order, so, um, where am I going? I got, um, south. South further. I don't know, I look at this, uh, these uh, photographs, I'm like, wow, look at all these barns and Amherst. Yeah. That's yeah, cool they're report. wonderful. Okay. Where are you guys? Oh, oh, here you are, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, this is, I know this is, gives people headaches and it's not the... Uh, it's okay. Um, sorry, where is it? I know it's coming up. Um, uh, it's on there. 5.35. So here it is. So here's, here's one oh, image of it. Oh, it was cute. Oh boy. And here's, here's actually another image of it, which makes it look almost like a chicken coop. Hmm. Because the ground sloped and that's the back? Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. hmm. Is yeah, the picture the below roof. it of the same building? No. The roof doesn't look to be symmetric, so it's just, you know. Mm. Mm. So that's, that's the, right. And so here's the other image of it. What's the one below, though? What's the third one that Jane was asking about? The next oh, one? Oh, sorry, that's a different address. Oh, okay. okay, it is. Okay. Yeah, that's a different address. Yeah, okay. definitely. Okay. It's a sweet little building. It's a big building, actually, you know. Yeah. It is a big building, so it'd be interesting to know if they demolished the whole thing. So it's sort but of L-shaped, and they might have only taken the little piece of the L. Right. Yeah. Look at this. Right. This. Um, yeah. Right. So here's the. This L is what we're seeing. Sorry for the scrolling in this photo. Or sorry, this oh, is I this is the right. right to lean to to the right. right. So it'd be important to know if the whole structure was removed or just that part. Right. But mm -hmm. also, I think that that our statement to, you know should be to the fact that it was identified mm -hmm. and it, 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 it by mm -hmm. the, by the state as an as a outbuilding to be concerned you know of our concern and um and that, if the rest of it hasn't been taken down halt and desist, cease and desist right right, right. during but, that um 
during that process of inventorying the outbuildings, didn't didn't Shannon or PDC the the planning commission didn't they contact each owner? Uh, I'm not sure if they contacted all of them, but they contacted some of them. Mm. But yeah, right. So I mean, so the owner could know it's on the inventory, or know that there was potential for it to be listed. You know that that right. the building was at least you know had some architectural features, uh, and you know that it could have been uh, inventoried individually. So you know the the house is older, and so sometimes what happens happened is any secondary structures when we had done uh, the inventory forms, we wouldn't do, for some reason, any ancillary structures weren't recorded. So we were trying to then capture them again mm -hmm. or capture them on the property, so. So if we send a statement to the effect that this was demolished, all or in part, and a cease and desist for whatever remains and a fine, um, the, and any further work needs to come before the Historic Commission, that seems reasonable. Yeah, and if when you go over there tomorrow, Ben, they're in the process of knocking it down, put your body between the workmen and the building. <laughs> yeah, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> myself we to the we value ball. your life more, Ben. <laughs> it's surprisingly strong. Ben, just bring some chains, you'll be okay. Take your Superman pajamas, wear them okay. under your clothes. <laughs> Okay, so this to me seems like something that needs a vote. Okay, yes. I move that we tell the building commissioner about the situation with 535 South Pleasant that a demolition request application came in and before we could meet about it, all or part of the building was removed. We would like to ask the building commissioner to determine whether any of it is left, and if so, keep them from destroying any more, and impose a fine for their violation of the process. How's that? Sounds good. So, building commissioner, ask the building commissioner to confirm condition to determine whether all or part was removed. Gosh, can't you type as fast as I talk, Robin? <laughs> zoom, zoom. <laughs> Determine whether all or part removed. Um, if any part remains, um, make sure they don't go any further until we have a chance to meet about it. So make sure no further demolition until review. And then um, the third thing was impose a fine for their violation of the process. The violation of the process. Okay. According to the um, bylaw, the current bylaw. So, Jan moves that uh, the Historic Commission informed the Building Commission of the situation with 535 South Pleasant Street that a demolition application was received. It was uh, demolition occurred before the Historical Commission could meet? Uh, ask the Building Commissioner to determine yeah. what. Uh, before the before the number one, it should be the outbuilding at that address. Well, that's on the application. Yeah. Well, I, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and and before the um, Amherst Historical Commission can meet to, to make a determination. Okay. Uh, well, wasn't it before the demolition application was was forwarded to the Historical Commission? Or is that not? Yes, because he told us when he forwarded it that it had already happened. Okay. I think that's... I think if we could make that slight change, it's not just our meeting schedule, it's more the violation yeah. of the process. Because okay, I'm sorry. So let's start from the top here. <laughs> Historical Commission to inform the Building Commissioner of the situation with 535 South Pleasant Street. Demolition application received. Regarding an outbuilding. Pat wants to put that in there. Received for outbuilding. Received for outbuilding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And, and demolition uh, occurred before the historical commission could act on the request. No, before it was forwarded, the application was forwarded to the commission. Okay. Okay, before the period. application was forwarded to the historical commission for review. Yep. Yep. Uh, so, so the application really was kind of a sham. Okay. Uh, ask, don't, don't record that. Nope. Uh, request the building commissioner determine whether all or part of the building has been demolished. It'd be great if I typed more effective, more correctly. <laughs> if we had uh, the chat function on the Zoom, we could be typing this in for you, what we're saying. But we oh, all right. Well, mm -hmm. uh, if any part remains, make sure no further de demolition occurs until reviewed by historical commission and impose a fine for violation of process of current bylaw. According to current bylaw. Yeah. Great. Put that in their pipe and let them smoke it. So we have a second. I second. All in Except favor? Uh, let's go through the roll call again. Pat? Yes. Robin? Yes. Jan? Yes, almighty. <laughs> Patty? <laughs> yes. And Jane? Yes. Thank you. Um, so, civil war tablets. Um, I Which think great letter. Yes, yep. nice letter, Jane. Well, Ben Ben wrote the letter. <laughs> nice <good> letter, Ben. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and uh, glad we got that process moving. Um, so we got the letter to the town manager last week, and then on. Uh, uh, Monday, we met, we met and discussed the Civil War tablets. Um, looks like there's, there is uh, momentum and, you know, the town manager gave kind of preliminary approval to move ahead with uh, moving the tablets to the bank center, the poll room. Um, the, the only hiccup is uh, there's, there's talks of uh, having like a Town child child care services and um, the bank center is an option for that, uh, and so Paul just needs to like confirm, uh, and he will by the end of this week, like exactly what rooms are needed for child care and when that's happening. And but he seemed confident that the poll room would be available in the bank center. Um, so with that. Um, I've been reaching out along with Nate and Jeremiah uh, to find some quotes about, you know, what it would actually take to move, move them. Um, and so we're getting some information there. Um, however, the other step of this process was like, we wanted to have the conservators like all lined up and ready to go to come inspect the tablets um, when, you know, by the time they were moved. So I, I reached out to them and it sounds like, I, I don't know if you saw that email, Nate, but um, Irving the from Monument Conservative Collaborative who did the restoration in 2010 due to COVID um, isn't currently doing restoration work um, in, or indoor, indoor restoration work or really any consulting right now. So yeah, I think we could just tell them it's a closed building. It's close to the public and we would just, yeah, you know, we could just, drag them in there. You can tell them they're outside the bank center and then just trick them and no. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that email, but I think if we explain to them that the building's been closed to the public for months and. Great. But yeah, I think the town manager, right, the, so. Wait, I'm sorry, like, I, I missed that. The, the, the question was that the conservator is not currently doing work, but you think that that can be resolved by having no one in the he, building? He, he expressed he, made, he wasn't maybe comfortable doing work inside right now due to COVID. And um, Nate but, suggesting that because the building is empty, it shouldn't be an issue? Yeah, I, we haven't, he doesn't know the particulars of the building or the setting. Okay. 
And he's but, not like in there for hours doing work. He's just looking at them. Yeah, yeah, I just don't understand what the uh, what Dave was saying. Okay. But I think yeah, the, the the town manager, you know, thought that you know there's other um, with staff and then you know Jeremiah, the new uh, facilities manager and director. You know, whether if the bank center didn't work, there was, you know, there's discussions about where else they could be um, temporarily opened, you know, for a number of months possibly to allow, you know, the commission to see them even, you know, we could coordinate a site visit to let Anika and her team to have different conservators. So the thought would be whether or not it's Monument uh, Conservation Collaborative, you know, we, there's discussions about whether or not there could be another team of conservators or architects to come in assess them and then also develop you know guidelines for their display so you know figure out could they be displayed outside why or why not you know are they just too old is the marble too fragile have have you know have them the tablets be available for viewing for you know long enough so that we could get some of these answers these questions answered and so you know paul seemed uh, pretty open to that and it's just a matter of you know where and then how so there is some leftover CPA money that would fund the moving of the tablets and hiring of, um, you know, uh, these consultants to come and assess them and help with any, anything else. So I, I think it's- I'm sorry, there's existing funds that we can use? Yes, uh -huh. yeah. There's leftover money from when they were cleaned and that money was, had met, been, had, you know, was set aside to help find a display for them and it never happened. So we've been holding onto it for a while now. Um, I, this is uh, a suggestion. I, uh, ben, I'm not sure where you're looking for quotes for moving, but I know mm -hmm. a, an art handling outfit uh. in Florence that uh, does transportation and, they're, and they build crates. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Dax Transportation, D-A-X. And they, do, they, they handle lots and lots of private collections and college and university collections. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to know. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, we were looking at uh, basically just like, you know, moving companies, uh, you know, typical moving companies, but then also uh, like companies that work with granite, like countertops and have familiarity in the equipment to move very large uh, stones. Um, slabs of stone. Yeah, like stone slabs. But this is a great suggestion, Jane. I think, yeah. you know, um, one maybe that the thought could be that the crates they're in now might have to just be discarded and new crates made or at least te temporary um, easels or A-frames made and get them out of the crates, just let them air out, get away from the insulation or whatever material they're against now mm -hmm. um, and let them, you know, get acclimated to a new, um, to a climate controlled environment. I guess, you know, they're, I think it was Irving or Jeremiah, or somebody even said that there might be concern that there could be some, you know, they've been in a damp environment that you want to at least make sure there's no mold or any growth on them mm -hmm. on all sides of them. So we're hoping to get them visible and, and, you know, if need to be clean spot cleaned and everything. So. I second Jane's recommendation that we use an art handler because it is marble. It's not granite. It's not another type of stone that's harder. Mm -hmm. Marble, it's tensile strength really needs to be understood by whoever moves them. So someone who's used to moving statues and other marble things should be considered. Uh -huh. Yeah, I found a mover from, um, maybe it was New Haven, that said that online, that said they'd be willing to come up here, Ben. Um, nice. And then, of course, on the website, they had pictures of them, you know, you know, moving, you know, it was more contemporary stone statues. It didn't, you know, they said they'd handled historic pieces, but, you know, everything I saw on the website was, you know, you know, more recent statuary, but they did, they were, they, they are, they seem like they were capable of moving, um, you know, would be capable of moving the tablets too. So I can, I can forward you their name if you want. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the website for DAX right now. It looks, looks like they specialize in this area too. So yeah, Great. That's, a, that's a nice recommendation. Thanks Jane. Sure. Yeah, Irving, the conservators aren't really, Yeah, they aren't, it's interesting, they don't, um, whether or not they are, just don't want to have the liability, they haven't really recommended a mover. So, you know, they're specialized in conserving stone, but not in moving stone. So. Yeah. And they're, they want a mover to break it so they get work to come fix it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, anything more on, on the tablets? That's a good update. It, there's yeah. some progress there. Yeah. I, I, knew, I do know we had uh, authorized or voted to write the letter to the library last meeting. Mm. Um, I, I didn't get around to that quite yet, but. Uh, I, I'm a little freer now. Uh, okay. I have a little more time now and I'd be glad to do that. Okay. Yeah. So basically it was reminding the library of the of past plans and maybe just inviting them to have conversations with us. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's something that hasn't really been, you know, it seemed like they were supported it actually. And then with everything that's happened with their protracted process for the expansion, it's kind of been lost and I don't, you know, yeah. it'd be nice just to see if it's something that's still a possibility. Yeah. Um, so with that, shall we go along to the bylaw? Uh, and maybe we can do a bit of a time check about how long we want to spend on that. I'm, I'm hoping we can conclude around eight o'clock. Is that? Yes. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could spend uh, maybe 20 minutes on this and then race through the last stuff in five minutes. Sounds, Sounds like a plan. Okay. Are you, are, you, are you volunteering to be the typer, Nate, or do you want me to share, share my screen? <laughs> so yeah, I was uh, just trying to find on my screen. I had too many, too many documents open. I can, uh, how, can how, what do members see? Is it legible? Do I need to make it bigger? No, it, it's legible for me. Yep. But last time it was great when Ben shared his screen because then as he typed it, we watched his process. I think I can do the same. Okay. You're putting me to the test here. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta be quick. <laughs> so are we going to, do we need to, review some of the suggestions from last time or can we go right to the next section? I, I thought maybe we just go just move down and at some point we might have to do a review but okay good so you know for the procedure we had um you know we, we had kind of we had simplified it uh to this and so i just want to make sure we're we read it um you know so we say no demolition permit for a building 50 years or older shall be issued without the following provisions of this bylaw the building is of unknown age, it shall be assumed that the building is over 50 years old for the purposes of this bylaw. And, you know, it lays out what, what's in an application. I, you know, this was the kind of the key, some of the areas we, we, we come up with, and then we didn't really finish the public hearing procedure, some of the details, but one is um, the building commissioner shall within five business days forward a copy of the complete application to the historical commission designee if the application meets the definition of demolition as defined in this bylaw. So, you know, we're setting up this two-step process. Um, the historical commission designee and town staff shall then within another five business days determine if the application concerns a significant building as defined in this bylaw. If there is disagreement, the application will be determined to concern a significant, bu a significant building. The historical commission will hold a public hearing for buildings found to be significant within another 20 business days. And that's kind of where we left it. One thing I would like to mention just quickly, when we looked at the draft that had been cleaned up and sent to us, I noticed a lot of the words that are in definitions that we've decided to capitalize, if you go back to the beginning or not. Mm -hmm. okay. So Ben or, or Nate, you might just go through and check. I, I had just one right after the other, I was noticing we'd forgotten to capitalize, like words like demolition and, right, right. and significant building and things like that. So that's just a cleanup thing towards the end. Sure. Yeah, yeah, no, but it, it, right, we don't want to lose sight of that because then it, you know, well, it, yeah. We, <coughs> um, so one thing that, you know, right now the bylaw is inconsistent in that it outlines a hearing notification process and a hearing process, but then it mentions 40A. And 40A is, um, Mass General Law Chapter 40A sets out a different set of timelines and standards. So, when we uh, had the workshop with Chris Skelly, he recommended not even mentioning 40A and just prescribing our own timeline. So, um, you know, it could be that, um, you know, what we say here in this section is that 
uh, that we just, you know, we provide notice to the applicant and the butters. Um, you know, so right now we don't, um, staff generates the abutters list. And, you know, with, a other, per, with, um, with other regulatory boards, the applicant makes an abutters request through the um, assessor's office and it, it's, a, it's essentially a certified abutters list. And, you know, so that's one, do we, would we want that as part of our application form or not? Or do we just, you know, that came up with an appeal with the barn on 290 Lincoln Ave, you know, years ago that it wasn't a certified abutters list. And the assessor kind of laughed and said, well, what staff generates is basically the same thing I generate. So I just, you know, if we say an abutters list, we could just say, um, you know, notice of the applicant, abutters and parties of interest shall be done um, by, by staff. And it could just say that, and it's not, you know, it's not a formal certified abutters list. I don't know if we want to mention that. We could just say that it'll be mailed out within 10 days. We could say 14 days, whatever we think is reasonable by this by town staff so that it's clear that you came up with the list right because if, for instance if exactly you state the, that right by town, town staff or whoever. right so we could say notice the applicant of butters and parties and interest shall be done we could just say something by town staff and then and as described in the historical commission rules and regs or not or we just you know we strike this yeah just say in 10 days yeah leave it is there right. any need for uh what's the significance of now i've forgotten what i was just looking at oh special permit when, well, when, when that was in there what was i think why was that yeah chris kelly recommended taking it out i think like i was saying the bylaw okay. now is inconsistent it mentions in one place 10 days and then it mentions special permit which is two weeks and you're supposed to post it twice in the newspaper which you know, so my thought is we would just, Take it out. Yeah. you know, kind of Thank delete you. that. Mm -hmm. And so we can say posting a publication with a local new newspaper shall take place. Within 10 days. So a question about changing technology. Uh, is there, I mean, are we going to have local newspapers? <laughs> um, like print newspapers is that what this is suggesting or oh maybe just say something like local news media or something because it might be online well i'm i'm wondering i i haven't seen this kind of notice in online news local news media yet um but i'm wondering if she if would it would there be any um disadvantage in making it just slightly more general? Or is this, is local newspaper uh, right now a criterion of a larger regulations at the state or national level? Yeah, for, for special permits and other uh, permits, it's a local newspaper. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, interestingly enough, like for block grant, uh, no, local newspaper is not a requirement. Mm -hmm. It's just that you make a posting in a low, you know, they say, you know, local media or local, uh, you know, a local, a, a some, some place that can be seen. So they don't even really prescribe a method. Uh, okay. But so since I, we're not following the Massachusetts guidelines, we're just writing our own, we could say, we don't have to say paper, right? I mean, we say newspaper or, or media. I mean, is that... I would say, because this has to endure for the next 20 years, I would say something like within local news media, and that can be whatever is take is the form of media that's functioning at that time, you know? Right. And don't forget in A to put the 10 days. I have it here. Um, oh, so but that's we, different uh, from the notice to the abutters. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we need it both. We need something both places because yeah. they're different acts. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's probably the same wording prior to the public hearing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I don't know if we how we define days. I think we in the in the bylaw we we made it business days. Yeah, business we've been days. saying business days and we've been saying that spelling it out. So 
business days. Capitalized yeah. because it's in the um, it's in the definitions. Mm -hmm. All right. And according to Chicago Manual, if it's one to ten, you're supposed to write it, write it out, and after that, you use Arabic numerals. So do you want me to? It should see. It, I think it should say T E N, but that's yeah. up to you. Well, then we have to go back to fifty because you know. But that's over ten. I I know, but in the manual I use it. Oh, we have different that. manuals. <laughs> okay. One of my wife's a copy editor and proofreader. I'll ask her what she thinks. Yeah. No, this is good. The, uh, <laughs> I actually won't have her look at this. <laughs> uh, and then the site visit, uh, I mean, this is kind of, to me, kind of antiquated language too. I mean, do we just say may hold a site visit? I mean, as, I mean. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. If, do we need to say. I mean, you don't even need to say if necessary because you may or may not. I mean, very yeah. simple. Um, do we. Uh, I think that's probably sufficient. Do we need to say anything like arranged with the owner by town staff or is that getting too detailed? That's probably that too sounds detailed. more like a rules and reg thing. Right. Does it have to be within a certain amount of time? That, that's, I that mean, that would be, you know, I mean, ostensibly any time before the hearing and the planning board sometimes goes the day of the hearing. So they'll go the morning of and the hearings that afternoon. It's not, you Never. could just say may hold a site visit prior to the hearing. Yeah. Prior to the public hearing. Right. Capital P, capital H. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hearing. All right. And um, we might have to rework this, but we let, I mean, this just explains kind of the. So yeah. this changes because, you know, the historic commission of the public hearing. Um, time until review the application of course with the standards for designation at or it's it's no longer this it's what it stands for for determining if, if it should be preferably preserved mm -hmm. yes if the significant building because it's already been determined to be that right yes if this significant building should be preferably preserved Preferably. I would probably say whether instead of if, but that's just me. Yes. And I would say this building, just because we're talking about a very specific one at this point, right? Yeah. So everything that's capitalized is referred to at the beginning of the document As in that little grid, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It should be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And standards are not. So maybe why is that capitalized? Okay, they're not. <laughs> okay, you give up really easily. <laughs> I, I, you know, I could scroll up. It's just then I, um, I think yeah, we'll yeah. have to do a fine, you know, another read of this just to make sure. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I think this for now. I mean, this way. What, what I like about what we're doing here is we're really laying out a clear process, so someone can't question. Well, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. According to 40A, or what is this? So we're saying, okay, it's. Um, and here, this is one where it, it, this all changes. So, you know, we're. So if we shall determine that the significant structure is not significant building. preferably. Oh, yeah. significant building, right. <laughs> is not to be preferably, preferably preserved. preserved. Right. Right. And we, I mean, we like this, that this process. Building, what, what are we saying? Building. It's not to be preferably preserved. Not be preferably preserved, capital. And I don't think here, I mean, I don't think we need to mention the criteria as it does here, criteria set forth, mm -hmm. because because it's incorporated into this bylaw or what, I mean, formally, structurally, should we refer to back specifically to another section or? Um, yeah, my thought that? would be, do we just do something like this? Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, we have a few guests here. That yeah, are, yeah, I was going to say. Their hand. Oh, and this is how you're saying days in the old, you're spelling it out and then putting it. Right. Numerals, so you might want to do that. Thank you, thank you to, like, the guest, to the guests raising their hands. We were planning on taking public comment at the end of this at closer to eight. Uh, yes, we were going, it's uh, I have 7.39 now, and I think we were going to work on this until 7.55, but if we have members of the public for public comment, maybe we should back that up to 7.50. And most of them just left. Yeah, it I, like they, okay, okay, they all just left. They all just oh. left. I don't know if it was that. <laughs> that was weird. Well, you're scary, Jane. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was a it was a planned Zoom bomb that just failed. Yeah, or maybe, yeah, maybe it was clicked, very strange. They clicked on the wrong link or something. Yeah, there were five people here. that all had their hands raised. <laughs> so this, so yeah, so I mean, it's the the process to me is quite different. It what. Um, you know, what, what, what would happen now with this bylaw is, you know, the, there's the administrative step to determine significance. And then the commission really now can ask what, what's happening to the site. So, you know, we want to come up with guidelines for the future mm -hmm. um, for the discussion of at the hearing. And so what we're saying here is if it shall not be preferably preserved, I mean, do we, do we need 14 days? I mean, we're, you know, I don't know, subject to the requirements of the state building code. I mean, I, I am not sure if we need any of this. Um, but is the 14 days, is that uh, for the benefit of that, that, so I think that, staff or? Yeah, that had been for the benefit of staff because, um, you know, I don't know, what if someone's on vacation for a week? I don't know. I don't know okay. how to get 14 days. <laughs> five days? It just happened the next morning. You just let them know. Yeah, would we say five consistent? Five business uh, days. I think five yeah. business days. Yeah. Is that doable, Nate? Yeah. 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 Okay. So why don't we why don't we follow that format of five and then five the, the numeral in parens? Oh yeah. So and then it says um, within said days the commission fails to act. The building commissioner may, subject to the requirements of the state building code. Hmm. Issue the demolition permit. Yeah, that's the problem. Is if we can't meet, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that well, puts the heat on. That puts the heat on you, so, Nate. And so this ben. is after holding a public hearing. So this is basically like the commission's held a hearing, made a determination that the structure shall not be preferably preserved, uh, and then staff has to turn that around to the building commissioner within five days, so the permit could be issued. So and so the rest of that isn't relevant because we have acted. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what this is saying. If I think the, I think this was in there as a safeguard that if the commission never never conveyed its action to anyone, that the permit just wouldn't hang out there, that the the owner wouldn't be. Uh, but that's really it's with the staff once we finish. So. so if that is necessary, that last sentence maybe it belongs under D above. Maybe if because the historical sh commission shall hold the public hearing, blah blah blah. I mean, I'm just gonna highlight it, it in yellow. If it it doesn't ask, hold the hearing. I'm just gonna ask Rob what he thinks about okay. this if it's even necessary. Yeah, mm -hmm. it may be that we just strike it. And at the beginning of E, public hearing should be capitalized. I mean, it's just another one of those situations. Yeah, let me just, tiny stuff, but you'll want to catch it eventually. Right. I think probably we should capitalize every word in the entire document. <laughs> yeah, it'll look like something Benjamin Franklin wrote. <laughs> I'll give it some heft. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this to me would be if so again, building. And, and I, up above, if, if after such hearing, I would say if after the public hearing, let's keep it consistent. Oh, yeah. Take out such. If. After the public hearing. Well, it's actually during the public hearing. Or, or, yeah. yeah, it's not after. Mm -hmm. If during yeah. the public hearing. 
And that's true for E as well. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just say. Should we make that the public yeah, hearing? The public hearing. We're just making it much easier for the copy editor later. Right. See, we're saying if during the public hearing, the commission determines that the structure, significant building shall be preferably preserved. Uh, I mean, do we, do we just keep the rest of this? Um, and that the post demolition would be detrimental to the historical or architectural heritage. Well, that's part of determining it's preferably preserved. We don't need that. It would go down to van it shall transmit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that clause there, that should be one of the criteria. Right. Yeah. Wait, this is the same thing as E. We let the this building- is saying, the E is saying if it's yeah. not preserved, and this is saying- Oh, it is oh preserved. shall be preserved. Okay, right. And maybe we need more time for this, or do we? Um... Well, we've got five or ten more minutes. Do you say within ten business? Oh, days? oh, sorry, you meant. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he meant that. I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, within within we five, five minutes. Within five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so we're, we're saying 18 months here. Um, yeah, we have to, we have to decide that. And we've talked about some pros and cons. For, yeah. for so both it could, it and could say, should not be issued for up to, because we could have, we could have the determination to say six months with, with yeah. criteria 12 yeah. months. That's a good idea, Pat. I, I haven't seen other bylaws do that, but I think that's very, that's a, well, it gives us, that's a good idea. It gives us a range because yeah. then we can, we can within the commission decide that, you know, we've, we've done criteria for if you can find uh, someone to repurpose the materials, then come back to us in six months, if you could, da, da, da. and so yes. this is, we don't want to have it delayed any more than that, but it, but it doesn't have to be that. I have to step away. I, my family was away and I think they're back. So I just want to make sure that they're, that's what I'm hearing in the house. It's really <laughs> your family? Sense. It's really my family. Um, can I make a, can make a comment? Um, to have such an open-ended, can people hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, to have such an open-ended um, uh, structure, let's just imagine three to five years down the road that the historical commission is perhaps made up of people who are not quite as friendly to historic preservation. <laughs> that opens up the possibility for, you know, incredibly limited delays. I would think that, mm. oh, yes. that you know, that there really is kind of a, a you know, a pattern of a minimum of 12 months at this point, because, you know, in a situation where somebody really wants to tear something down, six months is, and, you know, and it takes a while. I mean, I don't know that our community is necessarily in this, in this. So in uh, the, so in the uh, definitions, right, we define a demolition delay, we say 12, a 300, well, a, you know, 12 month delay. So maybe what we do is we have, we have a section, uh, kind of the Robin Cheer point, we have a, um, Kind of an exception section right where you know it could be lifted so we would just say in no demolition permit shall be issued for the duration of the demolition delay i mean do we yeah and then that number can come on the definition i should right we're not right yeah and we still we still might want to change that number from 12 months to 18 right. but it doesn't have to show here Right. The right. The point of some of those definitions were to not have to be so repetitive in the, in the okay. within the bylaw. So it's just okay. And then this highlighted section again. I'm not sure that's necessary. I don't. I don't I'm not sure why it's in there. It's just maybe. Hmm. Um, you know, it's again. Well, why, don't, why don't you check on that, Nate, to see whether that needs to be there, whether it needs to be worded differently, yep. or can be gone. Right. Yeah. All right. So. 
yeah, I think that, I mean, to me, that's a pretty clear process. Yeah, we did a whole section in, what, 15 minutes? Wow. We're getting faster. We're getting good at this. <laughs> of course, <laughs> Nate types a little faster than Ben. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, the next meeting. Yeah, you have yeah. to do the next meeting, take some, uh, you know, some exercises. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's been percolating a long time. Yeah. So. Would we, should we pause and t take up the other agenda items at this point? Or? Yeah, I think that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, let's do exemptions next meeting. Yeah. How much more do we have after exemptions? After exemptions We're about halfway this. through. This is now, this, this demolition permit application has become somewhat redundant. And I think it's now, this, this whole section of standards for designation, I think this, is, this would be replaced by standards or whatever we want to call it for preferably preserved. Right. So. Um, and we've gone over those a few times, so it might not take so long. And then here's the section 13.5 is saying that, um, you know, for instance, if the owner or the applicant comes back and says there's no, you know, this is when it allows them to come back. You lift it. Okay. To lift it. Uh, emergency demolition, which Good. I will say um, we've done it. Um, you know, I think state building code allows the building commissioner to issue a permit for emergency demolition if it's a threat to public safety. So I'm not sure we need this in here. Let me just highlight this section now that I'm saying it because, you know, for instance, um, an applicant had applied. Um, um, a, um, a while ago and said, oh, it's going to fall down. And so Rob went by and said, no, it's really not. It's not, you know, you can't just take it down as an emergency demolition. And so, I, I mean, I think that that's just a, it's a state building code. I'm not sure if we need to have it here, but. But, but you know what, Nate, I think it's worth checking the wording and leaving it there because there, there are some people who might try for emergency demolition and not know how right. that has to be processed. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, we also, I mean, historically, we, many of our, a significant number of our demolition permit applications refer to, I mean, just like this one tonight, unsafe condition. Right. And, um, you know, we're, we can go look at it and we can say, oh, this doesn't look unsafe. And, and then we're fine. But I'm not sure we're the ones to determine whether it is unsafe. I think we need some way, whether it's within the bylaw or within yeah, the rules and outside the commission, right? Yeah, no. of, of having an out, an, a neutral or outside determination of of the condition when that is the reason for demolition. Right. No. Yeah. Okay. So we can keep that. I think the next section is really what we don't have now is an expiration. So for instance, someone could come apply, we say they could take it down or there's a delay, and then three years after the delay, they haven't reapplied and then they come, they come back to the town and say, oh, well, I can take my structure down now. And so, you know, I just put in or change of ownership. So it's right. something to discuss. Sometimes an owner will try to get a demolition application approved and then sell the property to a developer. So you yeah. could say that, um, you know, if, if uh, if during the demolition delay period, um, you know, a new owner has to submit a new permit. I mean, we could write that in. That's good. And then there's enforcement and penalties. So this is what we, you know, what we're talking about. Um, good. Yeah. So, all right. So we can, we can look at the exemptions uh, next time. Good. Boy, yeah. we're now we're sailing. Hetty, why did you send the Petersham, Petersham? Um, just because I, I was there, and uh, it, it occurred to me that that the, you know the I, I wasn't sure whether everyone was really taking on board how how marble can deteriorate when exposed mm -hmm. to natural elements. Um, I, I have worked on cleaning um, a marble memorial in Hopedale. Um, it's a statue. It's not a you know, plaque kind of a thing. Um, and and then when I saw this one in Petersham just on the weekend, um, 
I thought to myself, I know who I should send these to. <laughs> um, just because you could see how, how sugary it gets. Um, I mean, it just reinforces how, how we need to really think about what, what kind of exhibit sort of setting we're, we're trying to create for these, for these artifacts and how, how we're going to really preserve them as well as interpret them. I'm, I'm just, you know, I was, I'm just trying to think as we go along with this, you know, what's involved, whether, you know, what's appropriate, you know, for, for, and where they should be, you know, I mean, they, they're, they're, they're town memorials. They're, you know, they're part of, they, they in, in ideally should be set with other town memorials, you know, and, and if you, it's like thinking about the National Mall in Washington, DC, or collecting things from people's graves, you know, there's a sort of, there's a really big context here for how we, how we think about the display of these and, and what we say about them and, um, you know, and also know that they are these very friable bits of material culture, you know, this, the marble can, can get really damaged. So I, I don't, I don't know what the answers are. I'm just trying to provide some of the context. No, thanks. So, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I feel like, you know, what you sent and um, Ben did some research and I looked at images too. And because the tablets were always inside, it was almost like they knew that they could be damaged. So some communities put them outside. Yep. And by this time, if they had been outside now, they would be maybe illegible. Yeah, that, exactly. That's not the case here. And so. Yeah, exactly. That, right. It's a different context for uh, how we'd want to preserve them. Yeah. Yep. So should we do the updates? Um, let's, yeah, let's do updates. Do we need to repeat writer's walk? Yeah, no, just repeat it just so everyone can hear. You know, we, uh, Anthony, the uh, town's procurement officer, did. Um, asked quotes from companies. No one responded. However, art effects, Anthony then reached back out to everyone. And, you know, one of the fabricators said that because of the uh, COVID, they're not, they, you know, maybe they just lost um, workers, but they're not really doing much right now. But art effects, another company said that they would be interested. And so, you know, they, they had a few questions. One was whether or not we would prefer steel or aluminum. We, we had specified steel and I'm not sure, you know, it, you know, it could just be cost could be a reason, it could be durability, but um, they were interested in doing that. So um, do we need to, uh, do we need to make a recommendation about steel or aluminum this evening? And a second question is, um, does there need to be a minimum number of responses in order to award a bid? No, no. So with okay. this one, it's just, you know, uh, I'm not sure if Anthony has to put it back out again or if they responded that they're interested and that they're the only ones so that we just go with them now. So uh, I'm not okay. sure. But yeah, I'm not sure. I, you know, I don't know what the benefits or drawbacks of aluminum or steel would be. I think, you know, I know that I know for both. I just, um, you, you know, know Nate, just, I'm looking at the 2018 quote from Artfix for um, the wayfinding signs and there it says aluminum. Yeah. yeah, right. And then we're going to paint it to look like steel, right? So right. We, we changed, yeah. originally we we're going to have steel for the town's wayfinding signs, and then we changed to aluminum. Um, the painting wasn't especially successful. Right. Right. And, and uh, aluminum, I, I believe, would not be as durable as steel. And is there, a, is there a, a preference, a recommendation, or do we, I don't... I would ask them for what they would recommend. And, and um, why? And why? I, yeah, I just was, actually this was for the they said Amherst Wayfinding, but actually it was for the Riders Walk. It was for eleven single, um, the right. standing ones, and it was um, eighteen seven fifty five for eleven of them. Right. So we figured, you know, with the yeah. the cards at the um, what's it called the visitor center. center thing. And then the difference on this and needing one more that we would easily hit our 25,000. So, right. but that was with aluminum, which mm -hmm. I think is probably better, but. Steel would price us out, probably. Hmm. Isn't aluminum just softer? 
It's lighter. I don't know if it's softer. It's, it's lighter, but it but it can have a tendency to crack. Yeah. And and so uh, it might not be as durable as steel, but if it's affordable, then getting those signs up is important. So one approach might be, I mean, if if we're concerned about durability and about budget, uh, we could ask them for a for an estimate for or a bid for steel and have aluminum as an alternate. Yeah, good idea. Mm -hmm. According to Google, steel's harder than aluminum, yeah. uh, less <laughs> likely to warp, deform, or bend. Right. Uh, force or heat, 2.5 times denser than aluminum and weighs, let's see, steel weighs 490 pounds uh, for, per cubic foot and aluminum only weighs 168. So then we have to start thinking how heavy are the signs in terms of the post we're going to use too. Yeah, I'll ask Public Works and Artifacts what they, you know, we could ask for a quote for both and just see how that works. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, try to move on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, West Cemetery signs. Uh, you know, I um, you know I reached out to this is again um, to Archipelago, and it's been I'm sure Ben did again. There, there isn't much to say. I think you know I keep it on here just so we don't forget ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have an an update. Okay. And then UMass Campus Pond. Um. You know, I, I, Ben had sent around some information. I think I sent something that they were planning to, you know, maybe um, it's really just a, um, you know, work within the water. And then there was, you know, some, a bit of shoreline that would be disturbed that they would re replicate, but it wasn't really a, you know, a camp, a, a, sh a, pond, a shoreline restoration project. It's really, you know, it's cleaning digging. the pond. Yeah. It's really more it's digging. Really concerns us. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Do, so, you do know, I remember that we were going to send some kind of a letter about them restoring the original um, plantings? Am I, we, did we discuss that or did we decide to send some kind of letter? And, I think um, we, want, we were first asking what, what they were doing. So I don't know. Right. It, to me, it sounds like they're not actually trying to touch any of the plantings. They're really just trying to dredge the pond. And yeah, clean. yeah. there's just a small area of shoreline that they're disturbing to actually like bring the equipment in and out of the pond when they do the dredging and then- and Then they'll restore whatever Fully yeah. interested. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I will say uh, just another update. I did send an email to Mass Historic and the uh, telecommunications company about um, the cell tower or whatever the tower was behind um, oh, West yeah. Conroy. Right. I didn't hear back, but at least I sent it and you yeah. know let them know what we what we recommended. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, our host. Nate, Ben, are there any members of the public in our meeting? Uh, Hilda Greenbaum has been in attendance. I don't okay. know if, if there's right. public comment now, if anyone has yeah. any other comments. Yes. Yeah, this is the period, for, yeah. the period for public comment. So if any members of the public wish to make a comment, this is the time. Please raise your hand. That's right. I actually think the other members that came in, Ben, I actually wonder if they were just here to cause trouble. If, you know, the way they came in. Yeah. Like, left it just Quickly, really they all raised their hand and like maybe huh. thought that we were going to promote them to panelists or something hmm. right. maybe it was a flash mob <laughs> yeah it was crazy they all came in at once but no <laughs> set, no song or music <laughs> <laughs> we, we set these up as webinars so members of the public don't have the ability to just speak freely and i think some communities it's more expensive and so some communities don't do that so you know they'll just have every meeting is a public meeting and everyone has the ability to speak uh, yeah. whenever they would like and they just have to unmute themselves and so that's when you get the zoom bombing more often is with that type of setup but um unanticipated items i know robin has one that she would like to bring up uh i just wanted to know if we had a the uh, well the cpa um proposal application and announcement has gone live correct nate yes right Okay, I couldn't find the link to it. Um, I was wondering, it's if you go to amherstme.gov and like the news banner, the second one, it's a there's a little news item. It went out, I think, last week. Yeah, yesterday, because I forwarded it to some people who are interested. Okay, yeah. Okay. 
I think I looked for it today, but I didn't see it. Okay. Um, I was wondering if we had a definitive list uh, who we distribute and the link to the announcement to, to encourage proposals and if that was something we wanted to build over time. So that it's not just the usual suspects, like how do we do outreach to effectively um, get people who might be interested in this proposal process um, notified? Good question. It goes in the newspaper, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we the, the CPA committee staff has a list of all the previous recipients and they typically email that out. I mean, there's not a, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's a co, I mean, we could send it, for instance, to the bid or, you know, I'm, I don't know of a coalition, you know, the, the Amherst has a cultural district. Um, yeah, and, Amherst uh, has a cultural district and I, I think the bid is a good idea. They send out a, a, a well, week, I think it's a well, weekly. A weekly yeah. newsletter, and that would be good to have a notice. Put have them put up a yep. notice. I think they'd be willing to do that. What about the um um the preservation listserv? Any uh, reason? That's the whole state, right? Yeah, yeah, but you know, I don't know if people on there talk to each other. I mean, people do talk to each other from different communities. They put out other yeah. other thought. We could do yeah the mass preservation list serve. Um, People come to me just because they know I'm on this commission, and so I send it out to all those who've asked me about it. So I'm okay, word there's out. also a there's also a Pioneer Valley History Group that um, that meets occasionally. Oh, that's right. It should be like owners of 18th and 19th century houses in the valley or something that could just be you know, an address yeah. list. You know? Well, I mean, I was thinking about everybody on that outbuilding list. I mean, that yeah, would be so we, don't, we don't maintain a database in that, in that way. You know, there's the Amherst Human Service Network, which is, you know, kind of a loose coalition of human service agencies, but we don't right. have a, a similar thing for, you know, historic uh, preservation agencies or, or owners. Um, right. Yeah, I think we could do, we could, you know, I mean, when you, Hedy, you were saying that, it made me think of PVPC, um, you know, you're not, as, you didn't say Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, but what you said remind me, we could even send it there to see, you know, they might have contacts as well. Yeah, or uh, people who've asked them. Right. We could yeah. also, uh, I think the bid is probably actually a little bit better than the chamber, but we could send it to the Chamber of Commerce also. Yeah. Well, no harm in sending it everywhere, right? Yeah, right, right. Especially as the time frame is a bit more accelerated than usual. Right. I mean, they probably both see these things that we all see that come on email, every announcement from the town, but just in case. Yeah. Do we know whether the, the house we visited on, um, oh gosh, Main Street? Right. Um, do we know whether they're aware of this as a potential source of funding for for preservation work on that building because that was that was an interesting house mm -hmm. and, uh, didn't somebody say they talked to them about it my imagine they, they have they've submitted a cpa proposal okay. in the past okay like a few years ago yeah this yeah. is the uh, yes mark Conkey house mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, Ben, you've been most recently in contact with them. Maybe if you just sent it again to the property manager and whoever you spoke with, just to, you know, maybe just to remind them again. Okay. And basically, what am I sending them? The link to the web page? Yeah, just say that they're eligible if they needed, you know. Okay. So I think, you know, what's interesting about that is it's a, um, you know, the property manager has taken the lead in discussions before I had been a representative from the condominium association. But I feel like, you know, with that group, they need, uh, some a little bit more explanation and help, you know, a little bit more nudging to get a proposal in. But so if you just email them, Ben, you, you know, you and I could meet with them again or have a, a meeting or something just to, you know, I, you know, I think I I think it's eligible and I think it needs it could use CPA funding. It's just are they oh, willing to put the work in and submit yeah. something? Yeah, they might need some guidance on the appropriate thing to submit so that it's you know more preservation and less long-term mm -hmm. right people i have to go um yep. what's our next meeting date 
Yeah. So our next meeting date needs to uh, collaborate with the CPA schedule. It's so the 21st of October if it's the third Wednesday. So we should do it earlier this time. The CPA proposals are due October 12th. I mean, do we want to meet before then or do we need, not need to? I think we're, the 21st would be fine. So that means on the 21st, an agenda item would be reviewing all the CPA proposals that were submitted under historic preservation. I mean, that would work. And then, right, and the 22nd is the uh, beginning, is that right? Is that the beginning of the CPA presentations? I'm, I'm not familiar with that. I haven't looked enough, so. The 21st oh, no. works for me. Um, so if you're going to write up um, the one that we're putting together for the cemetery, you could just send it around for us to see. And if we have any suggestions, we could just send them back directly to you. Correct. Yes. OK, great. Right. Thank, so thank the, you. Um, OK. Um, meeting is, uh, sorry, I'm going to go the CPA meeting uh, that begins to review <laughs> the proposals and have presentations is the 22nd of October. So it can't be any later than the 21st. So the 21st is good. Okay. Sometimes it has taken us more than one meeting to come up with our recommendations. So if we meet on the 21st, I think we could be prepared to spend the majority of the meeting sorting through this. So we're not going to get any further on the bylaws. Right. Or, it, uh, we'll or, see. <laughs> or we can put the bylaw first for 20 minutes and we can just tell everyone who does CPA proposals, we can actually have a time on the agenda and yeah. say 620 and we give ourselves 20 minutes to go through exemptions. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. just throwing it out there. And maybe know ahead that we might make, might go to 830 and allow for that. Everybody mm -hmm. plan on it. Yeah, it could be a long meeting because we would need, we would need to hear the presentations, then we would need yeah. to right. discuss our, you know, our priorities. And we had three hour meetings before and it could easily be that. So maybe we should just block out until nine this time. Do we, or can I make another suggestion? Could we meet yes, the week please. <laughs> <laughs> could we meet the week before? And then if we needed to schedule further time, we'd still have the following week. To if we, you know, if, if, if things just ran way over, would that make sense? Ourselves more we're seeing us two weeks in a row or seeing us for three hours at a time. <laughs> yeah, <that's a> good <laughs> yeah. Well, so the proposals are due on the 12th, you said? Yes. So everybody should be prepared, should be well prepared to make a presentation on the 14th. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's fine. And if we need, I mean, you know, we can construct an agenda that does include the other items we want to address and if we can't get to them then we could have the pleasure of seeing each other again the next week so we should save that as a backup time though i i think yeah, so it's tentative, yeah yeah okay. so block it out folks all right so the 14th and then the 21st that's fine yeah three hours Great. each six hours we should get everything <laughs> done for the whole year <laughs> fantastic <laughs> yeah bring, bring your dinner <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, that's great. Um, wow, what a productive meeting. We're just going to blast through the rest of the bylaw without any trouble. Uh, Thank you, everybody. The magic of Zoom. I propose we adjourn. <laughs> uh, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks,